So what we have been doing yesterday in our, our lesson and in the digital model was mixing two different substances and seeing if they can make something new, which definitely was some of what our claims were. Lots of people were thinking that the fertilizer and the iron pipes had a reaction or combined in some way. Um, some people were thinking that it was the iron pipes and the water. But we also have this claim or these questions about could the pipes on their own turn into the rust or the fertilizer on its own turn the fertilizer or into the, uh, the rust, I'm sorry. So we need to take a look at can one substance undergo a chemical reaction? So I'm gonna go ahead and get back on the digital model and try um, testing just one reactant at a time and seeing whether there are any changes. So here I am back in laboratory A of the digital model. And remember our focus question is, can one reactant undergo a chemical reaction? So can one thing change into something new um, and have a new product? So I'm thinking about starting with a, a larger molecule or repeating atom group because maybe that can break apart into multiple things. So I think I will start with checking out this, this thing, methane, and seeing whether that can react on its own. Let's take a look. All right, so we've got some methane molecules bouncing around. It looks like they did not react. So there was not a reaction there, um, which is interesting. Let's take a look just to double check. We started with methane and we ended with methane. So they were bumping into each other, but for some reason, the atoms were not breaking apart or rearranging in any way. So that substance did not have a reaction on its own. All right, so let's go ahead and test something else. I'm gonna reset, go back to laboratory A mode. Um, let's go ahead and test water. All right, let's go and take a look. Okay, we have the, oh, interesting. So we had two water molecules to start. And as we saw, so here we can see um, water is a repeating atom group of oxygen and hydrogen molecule or atoms. And right away we see as, as we saw in other um, things that they're moving around, they're bouncing around. And when these bumped into each other, we do see that atom coming off um, of the group. Actually two atoms coming off. And here, I see some recombination. So they reorganize, rearrange themselves in a new way. Interesting. Now I'm noticing in my lab conditions that this is happening um, under the condition of electricity. So I don't think that water probably just reacts on its own. It seems like when electricity is run through it, we can see that in fact, it does have a reaction. So here we do only have one starting uh, reactant and two products. So we started out with that water molecule. We saw it bumping around, breaking apart, the atoms rearranged into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Interesting. So to answer a question here, can one substance undergo a chemical reaction? It looks like the answer is yes. A chemical reaction just requires one or more substances uh, to rearrange into something new, right? So we get our reactants and our products. So this is really key. We have learned that during a chemical reaction, atoms are not changing into another type of atom. In fact, that's something completely different that you'll learn later about in chemistry, uh, where an atom changes into something new. Super cool nuclear chemistry. Um, but during a chemical reaction, all atoms are doing are rearranging to form different groups of repeating atom groups um, or repeating atoms. 
And we saw here that it can be with as little as one reactant and it can be multiple reactants mixing together. So this is going to be really important for figuring out what could have caused the rust to form at Westfield. It seems like a chemical reaction most likely took place, but between what substances we need to think about. 